Okay. All right, everyone. I would like to call to order the joint meeting of May 19th, 2015 of the Glendale City Council and the Glendale Successor Agency. May we have the roll call, please, for the successor agency. Council members, divine? Yes, here. Uh, agency, sorry, you said for successor here. agency first? Successor. Sure. Uh, agen uh, agency members, divine? Here. Friedman? Here. Garpetian? Here. Nanyan? Sharon Najarian? Here. And for the council? Council members, divine? Here. Friedman? Here. Garpetian? Here. Nanyan? Mayor Najarian? Here. Uh, would you please read the report? The agenda for the May 19, 2015 joint public meeting of the City Council and Successor Agency was posted on Friday, May 15, 2015 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Today we have directors of Public Works and Library, Arts and Culture regarding Central Library Renovation Project in connection with specification number 3551R. Uh, a is council motion awarding contract to Kemp Brothers Construction Inc. in amount up to 14400000 plus 10% contingency and rejecting all other bids. B is an agency motion awarding contract to Kemp Brothers Construction Inc. in an amount up to 14400000 plus 10% contingency and rejecting all other bids. At C is a council motion authorizing to execute amendment with Gruen Associates in an amount up to $127,121. And D is a council resolution appropriating $826,121. Okay. Mr. Ochoa. Yes, sir. At long last, we are before you with the award of bid on the Central Library Renovation Project. If you're wondering why <clears throat> we're discussing the library as part of the successor agency, the dissolution of redevelopment, it's a function of the bond financing uh, and the funds that are being used for this particular project. As you recall, uh, the tax-exempt 2010 bonds uh, were uh, designed uh, to have a significant portion of those funds go towards the library. Uh, that is part of the financing package here. However, the 2011 tax allocation notes that were sold the year that redevelopment was this, uh, dissolved uh, was also part of the funding strategy. And at this point, uh, those funds sit in limbo. So previously, before we went out to bid, the council authorized the use of uh, general fund reserve to the extent of $5 million to be used for this project with the uh, repayment coming from either the unfreezing of the 2011, 2011 uh, bond proceeds uh, or the repayment uh, to the city, to the general fund by residual property tax if we began using bond proceeds to pay debt service, thus freeing up uh, dollars that would come back to the former redevelopment agency, thus the city, and thus be placed back into the general fund reserve. A lot of uh, road to cover simply to do something that the previous city councils have wanted to do and financed it according to the laws at that time. Um, with that said, let me have Rubik Golanian, uh, Director of Public Works, come up and talk about the bid process because this also was a long drawn out process, although we're happy to say that the uh, pricing did come in within the engineer's estimate. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor members of the council, members of the agency. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ochoa. As uh, Scott mentioned, we have open bids. Last month, we received seven bids for this project, all below the engineer's estimate. However, the, the first three bidders' uh, bids were non, deemed non-responsive because they either lacked sufficient um, financial stability or insurance level or um, experience, required experience of projects of this size and magnitude. Therefore, we are recommending the order of the contract to the fourth lowest responsive, responsible bidder, uh, Camp Brothers Inc. out of Santa Fe Springs uh, with the, the base bid of $13.3 million, which is 11% below the engineer's estimate of $15 million. We're also recommending uh, the award of additional two additional alternates, alternate number one in the amount of $900,000 for re reconfiguration of the basement as a result of the um, introduction of the shear walls, as well as, as, well as alternate number two for $200,000 uh, that entails the uh, replacement of almost 1,000 fluorescent lights, the control panels, uh, and, and the controlled uh, fixtures. Um, all of that said, plus a 10% contingency um, is available. We have sufficient funds budgeted for this project, which will include 
uh, project management, construction management, moving costs, the remainder of the building permit fees, and the remainder of the uh, uh, design fee for the design and relocation of the chiller plant. Um, we will come back to City Council in the near future with a request for appropriation. We, we have a budgeted appropriation for almost $200,000 to hire a deputy inspector, structural uh, testing, and soils testing consultant uh, within the next couple of weeks. With that, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have, and Cindy Cleary, Director of Libraries, also here. Well, let me ask the first question. Are you aware of any bid protests that have been lodged by any of the uh, lower or other bidders? Mr. Mayor, uh, initially the lowest bidder had indicated that they may try to uh, file a protest, but uh, they've retrieved that uh, recently, so they are not going to officially file a protest. Okay. And the bid that was awarded uh, to Kemp is below the engineer's estimate? Yes, sir. All right. Um, so is there a... Um, do we have a presentation on the renovation? Uh, yes, Mr. Team Mayor. A few times uh, that there are some if that's members. your pleasure, Deborah Girard with Gruen Associates here, who can walk you through the scope and would the like uh, upper the, function of. I'd like to ask a couple of questions. Maybe it would be. Do you do you want to ask some of the uh, the issues that Mr. Golanian just talked about, the bidding issues, or do you want to hear Not the, the presentation? Not the bidding issues. I just wanted to know if the if the furniture is included in this price or not, or is something different that we have to do in the future, and what's the cost? Mr. Mayor, Council Member Arpetian, that is not included as part of this report. The Director of Library will come to you with a request for appropriation in a future date, but I will have Cindy uh, elaborate on that. Um, we anticipate the furniture costs to be about a million dollars, and we anticipate using development impact fee proceeds for that those costs. And these are development impact fees for libraries? Yeah, the library receives about 1% of development impact fees. And will that look just like that beautiful picture that we're seeing? <coughs> we're going to try to be as close to the original as we can. Yes. We need a little more money, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is very preliminary. It might be a little more than a million, but we, we probably have in development impact fees by the towards the end of the project 1.4 million available for additional costs. Can you tell me what's the square footage of the entire building? Uh, 92,000. 92,000 on all floors? Is on that all three include, floors. Including basement? Yes. Uh, is the base, are we occupying the basement at this time? Yeah, the, um, the basement's used for staff offices. Yeah. 92,000, okay. Yeah. Thank you. And since oh. you raised the park impact fee, uh, let me go to Mr. Ochoa. So how do we uh, portion? Is there an earmarking? It's not the parking fee. No, the... Library. The park. The library fee. Library, library, the park library and parks. library's impact fees. Um, parking impact fee is next. I'm glad you raised that. Um, how is that allocated? Uh, is there a particular percentage, or is it just lumped together because... Uh, the, uh, for the library impact fee, the... Uh, the renovation of Central Library really has been the um, ideal that we've been working towards. So monies that have been collected over uh, the last several years, Cindy's been working with her staff to set those aside. There will be some work done at the branches, uh, but, but generally uh, the bulk of our funding that comes through Library Impact is going to this project. So uh, I guess my question is on that, you know, the per unit fee of 17 or 18,000 that we oh, charge. Oh, what percentage of yeah. that? Is it, is it allocated uh, and, and distinguished between parks and libraries? Yes, because it's a percentage for each, but I don't know how that would break down in the 17,000. Um, okay. So I don't, I don't have an issue if, if parks tells me that's how they want to, excuse me, how, if libraries, library tells me that's how they want to use their funds. Uh, we still need to have that larger discussion about parks. There's a lot of park demands, and is it going to be in the river? Is it going to be on urban parks? Is it going to be that whatever? So that, that's another issue. So as long as they're not in the same pot of money. That's correct. Oh. Okay. But what is the percentage? Did he? Did you say what the what percentage? What is the percentage? You'd have to get back. Oh, to you have that. to look it up. I'm okay. sorry, I don't know what it's it's like 50, saying, but it is a set or, fee okay. based on okay. the calculation of the impact of development okay. libraries versus our park system, very clearly delineated between the two. Okay. Okay. 
So why don't we hear a, a brief it. overview? Okay. I'll, the, I'll invite uh, Deborah Gerard to project. go through the presentation. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for allowing me to do this. I love talking about this project. It's a great project. Uh, my name is Deborah Gerard. I'm a partner at Gruen Associates and have been working with uh, uh, the city and the library for several years now uh, on this, and uh, you did brand live the brand and library, and we did didn't brand you? library too. Yes. All right, good. Thank you. Good, good. <clears throat> So, so this is the uh, image of what the building looked like in 1973 when it was completed, designed by Marvin Taff of uh, Welton Beckett Associates. And uh, just for your information, we did consult with Mr. Taft, who is uh, still living, no longer practicing, but still in this area. And uh, he was very supportive of, of this project. Uh, these are the goals that uh, the city and library established and then we helped to refine uh, through the course of the project uh, to really respond to uh, changes in the neighborhood, uh, um, to uh, ch respond to changes in how libraries service uh, the public, to modernize the library, so changes to technology and how many things there are to plug in uh, these days that weren't around in 1973. Uh, to look at this as a historic building, even though it isn't today, to allow uh, us to proceed in a manner that allows it to retain its eligibility should we decide, should you decide in the future to uh, seek that designation. Uh, it's a really one of the better brutalist pieces of brutalist architecture in the area. Uh, accessibility uh, is obviously important uh, for the public. Uh, wayfinding, and uh, then lastly, seismic upgrades. And for the investment that we're making in this project to make sure seismic upgrades were not mandated, but they would seem to be prudent uh, based on the investment. Uh, and so those goals translated into uh, this little uh, list of the, the main activities, uh, the main changes that we're making, moving the entrance from the east side where it currently is off the parking lot to the north side. And, and that's really to uh, address the fact that the major parking is actually in the parking structure across Harvard. Um, the major public transit lines are driving along, are uh, running along Harvard, and uh, the Americana is a, a big pedestrian draw, and so uh, those are all addressed through this move of the entrance. Uh, we also have the opportunity to make uh, a little accessible, uh, a little uh, programmable plaza in front as well, which is something that we did at Brand as well. It's been successful and uh, I think been good for the library. Uh, and through the course of this, revise the staff entrance. Uh, we are adding an ADA compliant elevator that accesses all levels. Uh, the one that's ADA compliant currently does not access all levels. Uh, uh, revising the stack layout so that we can integrate seating with it. Uh, relocating the administrative offices to uh, uh, make them a little more efficient. Uh, right now, the admin services are in multiple places, and this co-locates co them. Uh, we're adding a room for rotating exhibits uh, on man's inhumanity to man, and uh, a maker space, which is a, a creative uh, do-it-yourself space where we'll have some uh, equipment like a 3D printer uh, that can be uh, put into the space and that people can, can rent and utilize on an individual basis. Uh, uh, adding shear walls uh, and doing that in a manner that's discreet so that we don't impact that future eligibility for historic status. Uh, upgrading toilet rooms, always a very important thing to do, making them uh, ADA compliant and improving their flow and functioning. Uh, relocating the central plant so that it improves uh, the efficiency of the equipment as well as uh, opens up the space so that in the future the Paseo is not impacted by the central plant, which is right in the middle of the Paseo at the moment. And uh, mechanical electrical systems and upgrading acoustics uh, for the auditorium. And uh, just a quick mention that we did go out to the community as well as the Historic Preservation Commission several times. So again, this was our muse. This is uh, uh, an image that we thought was really quite lovely. But this is what it looks like today. So not quite as lovely. Um, some of it's the color. Some of it's just being dated. Some of it's incremental changes that took place uh, over the course of the life of this building. And so this is what we hope to get back to. It's a, a modernized version of the original, um, but really returning the great room to be a great room where it's, it's a reading space and a collaboration space and, uh, uh, and that it really opens up uh, the space. Um, 
in plan, because it's probably an easier way to show you some of these things. So the north is up. I'm not sure if this pointer does the, much. The red dot doesn't appear on that side. Yeah, you're right. All right, so I'll just talk my way through it. Red, uh, north is up on the page, so uh, Harvard is along the top of the page, and the east is to the right. Um, so the current entry is off to the east. We are re relocating it to the north. And so you immediately walk into this big, great room off of... Uh, uh, the entry plaza, and you immediately see uh, with great clarity uh, that there are stacks to the right of you, which is on the west, that there are services to the left of you, but that there's this big grand reading room. Um, and uh, the new elevator is right there so that people can see it and access it. it. It's the only location in the building that we can actually access all floors. And from a structural standpoint, it made a lot of sense to put it there because it's not penetrating floors. It's uh, on the edge of uh, the upper level. Um, so it was a cost-effective way to add the elevator. Um, the maker space is down in the lower right-hand corner. That's that flexible, uh, creative space that I was talking about. The uh, exhibit room for Man's Inhumanity to Man is uh, off on the right-hand side. And you'll see that there are two new entries, one called relocated entry and the other new entry. The new entry is on the bottom on the south side. And that's a, a smaller uh, entry, but it, it's in recognition that uh, there are a lot of people who come into this building from the Adult Recreation Center, which is to the south. And so this provides an easy access for those people, as well as it addresses the future Paseo so that uh, people can really enter this building in two ways. And this is part of the change in our attitudes about libraries, which is that libraries are no longer the quiet place where you can't talk and you just get a book and quietly study by yourself. They're really more engaging, more community centers, places where people go to get information, and that information often requires dialogue with other people. And so uh, this is really addressing that changing uh, attitude about libraries. And you'll see the larger toilet rooms are down there on the first floor as well. Uh, upstairs, uh, we've relocated the administrative offices off to the west side. Um, the reading spa is where the admin offices, or a major portion of them, currently are. And uh, that will be opened up. So that also brings daylight and views into that main space and really helps to connect the north and the south side of the space. Uh, this is uh, just a quick little view of the basement. Uh, we've relocated the central plant by bringing it into the building. Uh, it's currently uh, slightly off-site of the building. And then revising the layout, which, as Rubik mentioned, uh, is necessary because of the introduction of shear walls. But it's also taking, the advan taking advantage of that opportunity to improve how that functions, get more capacity in there, and do a better job with the uh, stack storage that's down there. Uh, the entry plaza um, has uh, um, stairs as well as a, a ramp that goes off to uh, um, to the east as well. And, and that ramp, I, I, I uh, use ramp as a shorthand. It's, it's really a sloped walkway. And by being a sloped walkway, it's more navigable for people who have uh, trouble uh, with ambulatory uh, difficulties. Um, and uh, it's a very gentle sloped path. Uh, for those who are concerned about the big tree on the east side, rest assured we are keeping it and protecting it. This was important to the Historic Preservation Commission as well. Um, but we are filling in that rather treacherous well, which um, was not one of the better ideas of the original architect. Uh, and so we're doing it in a way that uh, can be undone in the future, should it's called reversible in historic mm -hmm. terms, uh, should that ever be uh, necessary or desired. And so uh, this is a view of uh, what we expect the uh, new entry to look like, and uh, we're very excited to get started on the project. Thank you. Questions? Always have questions. You know <laughs> uh, I have a couple of questions. Sure. I, you know, I'm late in the game. I know it's all done. It's all approved. I wanted to ask you a few questions regarding... Uh, you know that, that entry plaza on the left hand side, if I'm not mistaken, I, they just showed me the, the, the floor plans briefly. Do we have a, a flat area yes. left of the, the entrance? Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 to the left, depending on if you're facing the from, building. From, yeah, so, so where the north plaza is, that area, it, it actually is much 
it's deceivingly uh, deceiving on this uh, image. It's a rather large area. Okay. If you've been to Brand Library, it's almost the size of that uh, plaza that we've added there. Okay. Um, so it's it's a rather decent size. And what area. is that? Where it says Central Library, what is that room to the right? So that's that great room. That's the big double story space. Oh, I'm sorry. The room to the right is uh, um, the uh, circulation. So that's where the books are. Uh, and checked back in and sorted and recatalogued. That that's the one room that we're not really doing anything to. Because what 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 we were thinking about or what we talk we were talking now I was talking about it that maybe how you should have had a little cafeteria there. We would that love opened it. Up to the outside, the the, the out, with the outdoor sitting that would tie with our uh, art district, inviting people in because uh, on that day you can put some you know coffee carts or what have you, but if you can tie that, I don't, I don't know how, how possible is that, but if you have a little cafeteria, because people come there, look at the, all the big bookstores, they all have cafeterias there. You can, we don't, I know we are not in the business of running ca- coffee shops, but it could be list up to somebody that will tie up to that, to that outdoor seating <clears throat> area, and uh, that would make a, you know, that would make sense to me, but I don't know about my colleagues, but on the second floor, <clears throat> Well, can I, can I just address that yes. briefly because we did actually plan for that. So while it's not in, well, well there's not a cafeteria or a, ca- a coffee shop or cafe in the project, there is a provision for a coffee cart, so a, a movable. It, it's not, but it, 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 we felt like it was a, a good step to take so that one of the concerns is whether you can have a concessionaire make money in a library setting and, and which would affect its future viability. And so the, the coffee cart seemed like a, a good provision. So there's water and power on the plaza so that you could set up little tables and have a coffee. But you don't have food and drinks in the library anyway, do you, Cindy? Uh, uh, yeah, we allow. Do you? Oh. Yeah, they do. And, and hmm. I think that that cafeteria concept, especially with our youngsters, make a lot more sense than having having a coffee cart outside. We, we would gladly uh, look at that for you. <laughs> we would love I that. Know, I, I'm a big reality. coffee drinker, too, so I, I would be happy to do that. On the second floor, we have a little kitchen there? Yes. Okay. How big is that kitchen? Uh, that, it's a relatively small kitchen. It's uh, really just to serve the needs of um, events that are in the auditorium. Okay. So it's it's not... Calling it a kitchen, I think we, we it's more like a little warming space with a microwave. And, and is that sufficient enough if there's a function at the, at the auditorium and they want to have, I don't know, delivered food or what have you? Is it, is it large enough to accommodate them? Because we rent the, the auditorium, right? That's right. And if we can provide something one step larger or one step higher or better quality or what have you, or more, more space or more room... Uh, I think we can. We're spending fifteen, sixteen million dollars on on this library. I, I think having a. I don't know. I can't tell how how large that is. It larger than ten by ten? It, it, it's about ten by ten. Um, maybe maybe slightly smaller than that. Yeah. It, it's it's not um, unlike the function of the little kitchenette in Brand Library, and and I just put that out there for context, and some people are familiar with that. So it's got counter space, it's got a sink, uh, it's got a refrigerator. Um, Effectively a prep area for the it, caterers. That's right. Very much more functional than, than what's there right now. That little right. kitchenette that's just off of the auditorium today, imagine that, but upgraded and renovated. I, I don't know. If, 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 if we have the if it's in the budget and we can we can do something more quality than that, I, I would I would go for it. But I, again, I'm I'm late in the game. I'm, uh, I think a lot of it has been done already. But the, the it, it's more of a space issue, quite frankly, than a, a budget one. Um, what's the one? What's next door to it? Uh, the entrance of the auditorium. Which one is the kitchen? Can I come? So the kitchen ad- adjacent to the to the auditorium. Yes. And the one to the right. Mm-hmm. The small room to the right is what? I don't remember. Actually, I'm just so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is a storage, as well as the two entrances to the room, and then there's a storage space for actually for our children's services section. And, and in the middle is the uh, AV and uh, 
um, lighting control. I don't know. I would, I would, I would find another story, especially in that huge 92,000 square feet building, and make that kitchen a little bit larger. Well, we'll be happy to look at that. Just a suggestion. So. Yeah, sure. We'll be happy to look at that. And so is all the parking across the street then? There's no parking on this site? There is still parking on the site. It's just uh, parking on site is not uh, generally what's used by the, uh, by the patrons. It's really the parking across the street. Because the parking on site is limited to uh, 30 minutes or one hour. And uh, they do ticket, uh, as I found out on several occasions. Um, but uh, it, so there will, when the paseo is uh, in place, there will be some impact to parking. But our goal has been to find ways to recapture some of the parking without impacting the trees that are uh, beautiful and mature over there. Uh, one more, one more quick comment on that: uh, man's in inhumanity to man. Yes. I, I don't know what, what artifacts we're going to put in there or what are the, what is our, our it wasn't me. Uh, what is, what is our, our goal? But uh, I think as a, this year being the Armenian Genocide Centennial, I think there is a, what is the plan for that? Is there a monument? Is there a, an artifact? What is it that we're going to have to put in there? But this is, this is, really enclosed and it's, it's tucked away from everything else. Uh, I think it should be somewhere that's more visible, and especially if you have a monument or an artifact, it has to be somewhere that it's more visible and it's, it's more inviting to people to come in and, and see it. The way I saw, saw this room, I don't know how, I'm really okay reading plans, but I couldn't, I couldn't uh, tell what this is. Yeah, sure. No, I, I can appreciate that. We're, we're trying to find a balance. Uh, so first of all, the exhibit uh, within the space will be rotating. It's not going to be, or at least uh, the, the current plan is that it would be um, exhibits that can change um, with whatever frequency is desired. So there's not an artifact in there or any permanent exhibit. And, and we're trying to balance um, a flexible space that is both uh, a part of the rest of the library as well as private uh, enough to be a contemplative space, uh, to be have some solemnity to it uh, so that it's a, a little bit removed from the, um, the, the noise that could be within the, the rest of the library so that it's just got a more reflective character to it. There is a, a transparent... A uh, wall that is to the north of it, between it and the rest of the space, so that people can see in. It is Which not. One is that the, the front? It, 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 so the one that says exhibit room, just to the right of the new entry, is. No, where, I know where the oh, okay, I'm sorry. Is. Where is that transparent? Wall? Oh, so so the wall to the north, uh, up on the page, and and uh, so that people can see in, so that they'll get curious about what's inside, but that it uh, helps to define the space and to uh, allow it to have that more reflective uh, character within it. So what are you telling me? There's not a, uh, all these exhibits are like traveling exhibits that will come and go. A little bit of both, actually. You'll, you'll have a, a couple of elements that will remain with the room. Again, this is what we've, we've been working on. It's kind of an iterative process. Uh, but some things that will remain throughout. But in order to keep folks moving through the room so it isn't just something that's static and gets lost in time, uh, we would also be inviting, as the name implies, uh, the man's inhumanity to man, looking at different topics from around the world and bringing them in. So there will be part of it that will always be uh, <coughs> focused on genocide, quite honestly, and the other elements that would be focused on other incidents around the world contemporaneous uh, to modern times. So we want to keep that balance because if it's just something that doesn't change, our fear is what we see in other museums is that people stop coming and they stop learning and then you lose part of the whole point of the room. And part of the architectural design and the intent for this space is that it will really differentiate itself. It's got different materials. We're not using the materials on this room in any other place in the library so that it's really special um, and uh, kind of more like a jewel in this space. So yeah, but we, unfortunately it's talked away. So. It's actually going to be quite more visible than it might appear on plans. And uh, uh, um, I'll see if I can work on a sketch, if this would help you, to kind of give you a visual <coughs> of, of how you might view it as you walk in. And, and how large is this? Um, it's, 
Uh, yeah, I think it's about 750 square feet. 750 square mm -hmm. feet? That's as big as some of the apartments in the new con well, the new development. That, that apartments are not yeah, it, a 2,000 square foot building, so. It, it's a fairly large space. These are huge floor plans, so the scale of any element on them is a little bit deceiving. Okay, I'm just going to keep emphasizing on that, on that one aspect that I talked about, you know, the exhibits that come in, you have to make sure that the respect to the rest of the community, that's all I'm asking. Okay. And I, you know, we, um, we talked about that when we were thinking about that room and the idea is that there would be uh, always something new coming in. Uh, not just a static old, you know, I've seen that before, I'm not coming in, kind of like, you know, the brand library space where we, you know, every few months there's something new. It could be art, it could be historical photographs, uh, yeah, and I'm, I don't even have half of the types of uh, programming they could put in there, but th that's the idea. Instead of one static museum where you've seen it once, you've seen it oh, I understand forever. the exhibits can change, but the, the theme will stay the same. The exhibit, theme, exhibits right. can, can change, but the, the subject matter can stay the same. Uh, and I know Council Member Sinanian was talking about this with all of the, everybody who was involved, and uh, I'm, I'm on the same page, basically. It, the, the extent that this is the room dedicated to the larger issue of the man's inhumanity demand as seen through the lens of the genocide, especially in this 100th year, is what ties this room together for everything else that will rotate through. As I say, there'll be a balance between the issue of the genocide um, and the reflection on that, and then everything else that kind of comes through and we focus on each year. Okay. Uh, to uh, the mayor's question, they had sent us the information that uh, you were requesting, the beauty of technology. Uh, looks like $1,671 per unit for the library component, $17,080 for the parks component for a total of 18751 per unit, and that's the multifamily amount. So it's basically 50-50, almost. No, no. Oh, no, it's like 90-10. 1700 versus 17000 Got it. Okay. Per unit. I, mean, I knew that. I was just testing you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any other comments, questions? Okay, well, let's move this item along then. So we have two council motions and one agency. No, we have three, two council motions, one council resolution and an agency motion. Is there any prohibition against combining the council items? No. So we have a council item at 1A, 1C, and 1D. I'm going to move the items, but I just want to make a comment that I think Ruin did a really great job. You did a wonderful job. Uh, you did, it was such a spectacular project at Brand Library, so I have a lot of confidence that this will be just as spectacular. And a lot of people use this library, and I think when this is done, we're going to see that usage really skyrocket, and it's going to be something that is going to regain some of that former grandeur that it had when it was first built. Uh, and it'll be modernized, and it will be renovated, and much more usable and functional for the library system and for its customers. So I'm very pleased that we were able to finally find the financing and, and figure out creative ways of getting this done, done. Kudos to city staff for making sure that that happened. Congratulations. So I'll move the council items. I'll second. Roll call, please. Council members Devine? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Garpedian? Yes. Nanyan? Here in Ajarian? Yes. There's an agency motion at 1B. I will move that item. Second. Roll call, please. Agency members Devine? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Arpedian? Yes. Nanyan? Chair Najarian? Yes. That concludes our business. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Just one last comment. Let's just make sure that the furniture complements the architecture in every way. Okay. Okay. I move we adjourn. Second by Mr. Carpetian. We're adjourned. Thank you.